I'm going to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester. New episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including the Quantum Zone, this, that, or the third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. Full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capes and lunatics. Hope to see you there. I'm Kelly Thompson, and you're listening to Capes and Lunatic. Now we need a Leo Williams back. I have been working on that. I've been trying to get an interview with her for a while. All right, kids, but we're back. That's right. Second week in a row. Unlimited Justice, your Justice League, your Justice Society podcast. It's ironic we canceled the Justice League, Justice Society, because nothing's going on, and now something's going on with Justice Society, and I'm so pissed, but I don't have, we don't have time. We have other things to do. Yes. Again, we can always drop stuff on Salty and Petty, but that's right. Well, I after am... Transformers Month. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I am Phil. Joining me, as always, uh, not a Karen anymore, Lil's Hellfire. <gasps> Paige. What kind of damn name is Paige? <laughs> okay. What kind of uh She's a star, damn it. She's a star. What kind of what kind of uh, hard drive story have we done stumbled onto? I mean, I, I'm I'm an old school, you know, power girl fan. Karen Star, you know? Yes, yes. So, yes, kids, that's that's the special occasion. Yes, we are here to talk. Uh, yes, some today, busty justice. This week's new release, yes, uh, Power Girl, the Power Girl special. And, um, hmm. I have thoughts. I was reading some of the reviews, and I was just like, clearly, you just hate women. Like, clearly, you've read too much Kevin Smith and Frank Miller in your life, and you can't appreciate a good story because a. The Power Girl story is like literally Power Girl, more like girl power. And this is what I mean, the difference between being written by a man and being written by a woman. Mm -hmm. It's a very clear, distinctive thing. And even though I didn't really care for the Lazarus Planet stuff, um, it is good to see Power Girl being reincorporated within the super family because it's been long overdue. Now, do I like her psychic abilities? No. Am I willing to go see where, where this goes? Sure. Um, am I hoping um, Johnny Sorrow gets a little more teeth? Absolutely. But this is this is the first, you know, introduction, the one shot and the spinoff. And it, I think it was a good setup. Yeah, I mean, well, spoilers. I mean, they, they kind of did away with most of those psychic abilities by the end of this. Yeah. And then, then that one page where Catwoman shows up, I was like, hmm. I'm like, Teeny's doing a good job, but Leah Williams on Catwoman, hmm. Well, Leah's like the new Kelly Thompson. She's got a lot on her plate. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I know. Yeah. She was doing a bunch at Marvel. Uh, she did like that Exterminators uh, mini series. Yeah. yeah. But like, let's talk about the backup first, I guess. Fire and Ice, because Guy Gardner shows up. I guess that's continued from like that Action Comics, what, 52 or 52? Or what? Uh, Fire and Ice backstory. I, I really don't read Action Comics, but I can't remember which one it was, but. Apparently that was like a, a continuation from their backup story there or something. Oh yeah, again I I've completely forgotten about that, but yeah, but I guess this is uh like Batman has to show. <laughs> Not Batman, Superman has to show up. He's like, what the hell do you think you're doing, Guy Gardner? Get out of here! <laughs> Just gonna kick your ass, buddy. Get out of here! <laughs> but yeah, so there, yeah. We're starting well, no, uh, that that was something that a lot of people were like kind of praising. It's like, well, everything's been kind of revolving around like Gotham and Batman too long. This is like really a nice, refreshing change to see something revolve around like the Superman family. That's not like you know steeped in controversy because his son's gay, blah blah blah, all that. So that's also something that I'm, I'm I feel hopeful for. This is this has been kind of like a step in the right direction, and it's also female led, and it's um you know it's a female led character yeah. book, and then it's all, all female uh you know uh writer letter colorist uh, at least on the Power Girl stuff. I know mm -hmm. Nachos was um on the Fire and Ice stuff, but it's just really nice. Yeah, I, I think this is like really rubbing certain a certain you know neck beard fedora wearing part of the comic book community or the wrong way <laughs> a little bit. Unfortunately, I don't know. like our boobs aren't big enough. Mm. Oh, 
Well, is that the is that kind of well at least some of the point of the jacket where for Power Girl where it's like yeah you still have the boob window but it kind of you can obscure it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And that like like I said like it, it's kind of a, an essential part of her lore at this point. Mm-hmm. So I, I would I would hate for them to kowtow and back that down like. You know what I mean? Like, it, I feel like that was in the wrong message. Like, there's nothing wrong with having, like, big boobs and showing them off if you want. And clearly she wants to. <laughs> so, like, it's it's a whole thing. Yeah, I don't know about the jacket. It just kind of screams 90s to me. Well, 90s are back. Oh, uh, that's true. It's it's better than Tanya. Tanya's a uh, power girl suit. I hate it. Oh, uh, yeah. So, you know, it, I, I have a whole thing. Like, I don't I don't agree when Wonder Woman wears pants. Like, it, it's a whole thing. It's like, she, she if that's really, truly what she wanted to do, that's fine. But that was, like, the writer's, like, stance on it. And actually, Wonder Woman's pants are, like, super controversial. And I don't want to get us off topic. So, <laughs> I remember one time Travis Langley posted, like, just, just casually about something, like, you know, in his book. And then, like, he mentioned that pants. And then literally all the comments devolved into, like, how much everybody hated the pants. So, yeah. <laughs> That'll get us. And I feel like the boob window is kind of similar to that. That'll get us off track and then deep into the weeds real fast. Oh yeah, we could do a whole episode on that boob window. And we did scroll down or scroll over. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, basically the Power Girl story pretty much, uh, continues. Yeah, th- there is a, there was Action Comics backups with like this. I think it's the whole same team from this story. So, yeah. Is, yeah. Sure. yeah. And I was trying to, like, catch up. And I'm just like, no, nah, I'm just going to. Because Lazarus Planet was awful for everybody. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to read Lazarus Planet. I was going to say, just jump into those backups. Th- in that. Even those backups were a bit, like, I started. I'm just like, no, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it was kind of. This one is, like, kind of like they're putting that behind them. This, that, that was, like, their jumping off point where they got their foot into the door. And so, like, it's like, okay, whatever came before this, I don't care. Um, this this is the story that I'm worried about kind of thing. And I, I think that's how most people should approach it if you just haven't been reading Superman lately. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, it's great that Clark's actually back in the limelight. You know, it's not all Batman every two seconds. Yeah. And that that's kind of the weird thing about the Superman family. They're stretched out everywhere, whereas most, most Bat fam are, like, kind of centered around Gotham and it's you know suburbs basically <laughs> yeah pretty much so it's still you're still in that dark and gloomy and messed up place where it's like uh you know a couple of the other superman you know family people are like spread out more and you get to see more and they have a a more diverse personality palette i guess right because she's been estranged from the superman family for a while you know yep. So this is like really interesting to see where they're gonna go with that, and if they're actually gonna is she gonna replace Supergirl because Supergirl's brand is super damaged, especially after this Flash movie. Um, I don't expect it, so I think that that's probably why they're putting Su- uh, Power Girl into the spotlight. So we're gonna be seeing a di- well, and it's been a diminished return on the Supergirl brand since 1984. If we're gonna be real, right? Oh man, burn! Well, I, I, like I, even the Supergirl TV show did no favors for that character. Well, I'd say at least in crisis because again, you know, for they killed know, her. <laughs> yeah, and, and then first Supergirl they bring back is uh, Matrix, which wasn't yeah, actually which a was Kryptonian. Awful. Yeah, it wasn't Kryptonian, so no one knew what the hell was going on. They didn't even know what the hell was going on. <laughs> at least she wasn't making out with her horse or her cousin. So there's that. Whoa, I'm not with your hard drive. All right. <laughs> That wasn't even my hard drive. That was somebody else's fetish. I know. Oh, the fifties were weird, man. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but uh, no, because yeah, the, like the whole fire and ice thing. We know they already met, uh, announced that they're getting a mini series here. But uh, yeah, yeah. now I, I don't, I don't think that backup did them any favors. Uh, a lot of people felt like it was too short to really give anybody an idea of whether or not they should buy the number one. But I mean, it's a backup. What do you want? Ten pages. That's all you get. Yeah, exactly, but uh, it didn't necessarily whet my appetite. But you know, Guy Gardner showed up, so that 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 instantly, you know, smashed my girl boner. I was like, oh, this guy. Yeah, he's making a <laughs> he's making a comeback because uh, it seems like almost because last week, uh, did you have you are you reading Unstoppable Doom Patrol? No. Cal and Guy showed up in that one, so. Yeah, well, you know, the Green Lanterns as a whole are allegedly going to make a comeback. So, sometimes. I mean, I mean, there's uh, there's actually an ongoing book again. So, yeah, <laughs> allegedly. 
How dare you? And so, and then like there's a John Stewart backup, which is supposed to spin out a miniseries. So again, like I said, allegedly, <laughs> I believe it when I see it. Why do I feel it's gonna it's gonna end up like that Luke Cage miniseries? <laughs> still better, still better. <laughs> I know yeah. black characters have a habit of disappearing in the big two. <laughs> man, I would, I would. Oh man, I'd still love to talk to that writer. <laughs> Just Although, wasn't enough room on the schedule. Well, no, I think they the story came out. They're like, "Oh, this this could be too controversial or whatever." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we want what Zeb Wells is doing isn't controversial. Okay. Uh, well, same old, same old. You yeah. know, it's like, oh, a Sp- Spider Man killing off a young girl. Okay, we've been doing this for eighty years, sixty years. <laughs> Maybe wish they were doing it for eighty years. Anyway, <laughs> do this all day. <laughs> Literally, they can. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, no, I mean, just the way they ended the Power Girl story, I'm just like, man, are we gonna get a mini series or, or an ongoing? It, it, yeah, we're gonna get it's. I, I think mean, it's a mini series. I don't think it's ongoing just because uh, of the state of DC right now. Yeah, I was gonna say unless you're a Batman or Superman property or like Flash or Wonder Woman, you're not getting an ongoing at this point. They're, they're begrudgingly giving Wonder Woman because people would bitch too much if they tried to cancel that Wonder Woman at this point. Yeah. I mean, well, they're rebooting. That's what they're... Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but I enjoyed the art. Um, like I said, oh, yeah. the Johnny Sorrow, uh, I could leave it or take it, but it, it was interesting to, to like, yeah, I don't know, were... interweave all that stuff. Like, I would have just dropped it. <laughs> Like, yeah. they're, they're they're more professional than I am, so I think they were just looking for Earth Two villain and Yeah. Per Degaton's busy right now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I wanna see the super family and and their interactions with her. It's gonna be interesting. Like, I mean she got stuck with Harley last time they tried to like make her give a comeback, which you know. Yeah. Sure, eyes and beaver jokes, but like if you want to take a character seriously, I, I think this is the better way, personally. No no shade, no tea to Amanda Connor and Jim. Oh, yeah. But, you know, I've, I've never really cared for that interpretation. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, again, they, they, sh- they should, like you said, with the mm-hmm. Supergirl brand, you know, the, in the state it's about to be in, uh, they, need, they need to do something Power Girl, because... Again, she carried her own series until New Fifty Two killed. I mean, she had twenty. She had twenty seven issues till New Fifty Two killed that. Yeah, for reasons. Well, it, they... it, it, it's similar to Crisis. It's like, babes, we, we tried that with Crisis. People were pissed. Why are you repeating the same mistakes over and over and again? I know you're crazy, but that's like one of the definitions of insanity. Well, that's uh, well, <laughs> uh, among my many other reasons why I resented New 52. It killed off so many series I was reading, like Power Girl, Booster Gold, Red Robin. Uh... Right, Literally right when they were getting super good, too. It's like, yeah. you idiots. You freaking idiots. And we've, been, like I said, personally, I think we've been chasing our tails since the original Crisis event, right? Yeah, not as bad, but yeah, so definitely once we hit the 2000s and we started getting crisis after crisis. Yeah. Yeah. At, at least yeah, I'm excited. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I like Leah Williams. I like a lot of her stuff that she's yeah. done. I was really surprised that they tasked her with this. This didn't really like seem like it was in her wheelhouse from the other stuff. Like, you know. Power Girl's iconic in her own right, but, like, at the same time, she's not as, like, complex as some of the other characters. Like, because people don't want to make her that complex. She's just kind of conflicted as opposed to c- complex. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but again, I t- too, I think it depends who's writing her, too. And which way they want to go. You know, it's, it's it's like, do you want to write her as the well, outside? Well, she's never really had a clear... Let's be honest, just because because of the whole situation of which she comes from, she's never had clear purpose and direction. Oh, uh, well, once again, because of crisis. I mean, between yeah. 1986 and 2000, so, <laughs> there's basically a 20 year window there where she was. It was just basically like, well, there is no Earth two, so what is she? She's a clone. She's magic. She's this. She's, she's that. She's the daughter. She's, she's grand Max daughter. Lord, she's Maxwell Lord Six though. Who knows? <laughs> Oh my! I mean, basically, if you know, you know. (laughs) 
So yeah, I, I'm interested. Like, I, has she I, has she ever been written by a woman before? I, I think this is the first time, isn't it? Uh, I'm trying to remember because maybe maybe you know what that that's the thing. I, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I would say more so than Supergirl. If you take Power Girl, I mean, if DC did this right, give her a you know, female writer or two, I mean, they could give Carol Danvers a run for her money. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, question. Hmm. Live action Power Girl, who should it be? Ooh, I don't know. Pamela Anderson is too old and not a good actor, so I'm uh, just going to throw that out there. Well, I was going to say, do you have to have a busty actress, or can you fake that? No, of course you can fake that. I mean, it yeah. looks terrible, but you can fake it. Yeah. I don't know who I would who I would want. It's like I I'm not in the know with like these new and not not Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie is also too old. Sydney she's Swe- currently in her flop era. Sydney so. Sweeney. Maybe. I mean, she's blonde. Uh, she's kind of busty, so. I don't know. She doesn't even have to be a real blonde, because who's actually a real blonde? Actually, she's problematic, so no. Okay. Um, <laughs> they have enough you. kind of... I mean, she's like on the level of Ezra, if you know. You know you for uh, you know? okay. I had enough yeah. background. Okay, I was just going by looks. Okay. Yeah, she she's probably kicked off of Euphoria, so that's probably the end of it for her. That's true. We don't need a blonde because I mean, how many live action Barry Allen's have we had, and not one of them has been blonde. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, did you F see in that? The chat, F in the chat for John Wesley Ship. <laughs> did you see that the uh, the director of the Flash movie made some kind of statement like, "Oh no, Ezra Miller's like the best person to ever play Flash," and if there's a sequel, he would um, get the again. best person. Um, John Wesley Ship is still alive, so I'm glad he yeah. didn't get to hear that to roll over in his grave. But oh yeah, uh, oh yeah, I, I, everyone online was either saying John Wesley Ship or how dare you, Grant Gustin is still there. So you know, I know, like literally, he just finished the show. I think every, I think everyone else, everyone was saying. Literally, Ed, Ed, any other Anybody. person who played live action Flash would be a better choice than Ezra Miller. Wow, bro! That's They're really crazy. trying to hype that movie, no matter what they, no matter what it takes. And again, the only thing it's going to say if they make any money, it's going to be Michael. Oh, Michael Keaton. Who ah. is Sasha Call? Hmm. That's the one playing Supergirl. Oh no, she's not. No, no, no. Yeah, that's the one playing Supergirl in the Flash movie, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Henry Cavill, he means nothing. <laughs> Literally nothing. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I'm I'm super excited. I don't I actually would prefer a Power Girl animated series by the same makers from Harley oh, Quinn. Nice. Nice. That's actually I think would be the better route. And it would be like easier to get her into like the mainstream zeitgeist, if you will. Mm-hmm. Cause right. adult animation, that that's like kind of the way to go now. Mm-hmm. Do I... trust me? Those are going to be some adult themes. <laughs> and I ain't talking paying mortgages. Oh my! Do you mean adult like the Harley Quinn animated series? Yeah. Oh my! The same people that do Harley, I think, will probably do a really great job of Power Girl. Yeah. Because, like I said, like they actually get Harley and what like actual Harley fans that don't cosplay as like yeah uh, Suicide Squad Harley, like they get it, like old school Harley. Like I'm talking about Batman the animated series Harley, like that has a lot of her like pathos and you know stuff like that. Yeah. And again, I mean, that can raise the profile not enough of that animated series where if she gets popular enough, they'll be like, we must make an that live action. Yeah. Even a TV show, like, eventually, maybe? I don't know. We haven't ever... I mean, I feel like we should do different stuff in the Superman family. Like, I'm tired of it always being Superman. If I'm being quite frank, like, I am getting burnt out on live action Superman <laughs> TV shows. I mean, I, I'm liking Superman and Lois right now. Yeah, but it's still same old, same old, yeah. more of the same. It's still in that same mold, you know. But, but then, meanwhile, we get every Batman show doesn't have Batman in it. <laughs> well, that's what they get. You make a deal with the devil. It's like Disney, just stop being a dickhead and give them the rights back, man. Whoa! 
I, I mean, how much? Like, okay, maybe, okay. I feel like Warner Bros. should go to Sony and go, Sony, give Spider, if, if you give Spider-Man back. We'll give you some money if you give Spider-Man back to Marvel on the condition they give us Batman back. <laughs> I feel like it needs to be some kind of devil's uh, tango over there. Everybody just sits down and becomes a damn adult. Because Disney's in enough trouble right now. Like, they should just... As a stockholder, I'm worried, is all I'm going to say. Oh, my. Disney Plus wasn't the move they thought it was going to be, is all that I'll say, and leave it alone. Is it, is <laughs> it, is it too much, just like too many TV shows and movies every... Uh... Well, you know, they lost 5 million subscribers in the first quarter. Why? Why? Because there, there's nothing on Disney+. Plus. Oh. I mean, the way that they make their programming, it's just like, people just cancel and start it back up when the Mandalorian starts. <laughs> <laughs> and then the shows, you know, that they didn't make that are connected to the MCU are too expensive. And actually not enough people watch it, so. It's a whole thing. Oh my. <laughs> Uh, Our plus is looking uh, shockingly paramount plus is starting to look like the big winner out of the streaming and i'm like what kind of fucking parallel universe am i living in where paramount plus is coming out on top well i mean they got a ni- nice variety all the star trek stuff uh they got the keith or sutherland they got the sylvester stallone stuff they got the jeremy they got, yeah they got something for everybody they got that damn kevin cosner whole un- cinematic universe over there out of yellowstone got beavis and butthead yeah you got your Dario reruns, your Teen Wolf stuff. I mean, they, orig- yeah, all their original programming. I'm not gonna lie, it's solid. I mean, I mean, that's is that the formula? It seems like they're they're hitting uh, every genre. You know, trying to yeah uh, target every age bracket there. Yeah, and I mean, technically, they have Transformers now. So oh, really? Right? Yeah, that's a Paramount thing, right? Am I? Did I imagine that? I feel like I did not imagine that. I don't know. So I was gonna say, I said, you know, Disney needs to wrap up some Transformers rights. Oh, good luck with that now. You'll pry, you'll pry it out of their cold dead hands. Is it? Yeah, the the original cartoon Earth Spark is on Paramount Plus. But I was huh. thinking the actual movies they had too. I don't know, but anyway, we'll find out when we review the movie. I'm sure I'll figure it out by then. Check out <laughs> Salty and Patty. <laughs> yes. And our month of Transformers in June. That's right. Anyway, no, I was super happy with it. Um, I, I think people that don't like it are just haters and hate women. Um, personally, I think yeah, that's, no, I that's like just it. the vibes. Yeah, I liked it. The story was good. The art is good. The art was really great. I, yes. I was kind of worried about it. I was just like, oh, okay. And I saw it. I was like, okay, no, it's actually good. Mm-hmm. I mean, who doesn't want Jim Lee to draw Power Girl? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> this, oh, this my. Is good. <laughs> this, is, this is good. And like I said, it, it, it's it's the, you know, written by a man versus written by a woman. It's the same thing with the art. Um, It's still good, but it's not as literally in your face. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Which I like, because like, I feel like she was a gimmick and like a punchline. And it, it, it's a modernized Power Girl. You can't have that going forward. You know what I mean? Yeah. Again, I think there's a nice little. Uh... It's a balance. Yes, it is a nice balance. Again, Although I, I still I still really like obviously it's my profile picture for today, uh Will Jack on that at I was this action fifty two or fifty three variant cover or whatever. Oh yeah. Like that that is, you know, that that's my preferred aesthetic, but you know, you can't you can't win them all, but it's still like I said, I still really enjoy the art. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I miss the cape. I kind of miss having like a long cape. Yes, like listen, I I know I love Edna Mode and The Incredibles, no capes. I know, but like for Power Girl, she's like the only female like superhero that I I feel like actually it actually works on. Sorry, Huntress. Sorry, sorry, Batgirl. Because think about all the other people I like: Zantana, Black Canary. I'm just saying, Wonder Woman doesn't have a cape. Well, that's what I say for like most uh like. Well, unless you like the '70s. Especially if you're a flying character, like a you know, a cape kind of helps. It's flair. It's visually, yes. yeah. yeah. And especially if you're going to be, uh, if we're going to try to be folding her back into the Superman family. Yeah, exactly. Although, I, I mean, if they put her 
like a, a a nice pantsuit that keeps the power panel and the uh, the power window and the jacket. I, it would make a little more sense for aerodynamics, I guess. But I mean, all the Superman family has a little bit of flair and pizzazz. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I feel like she's definitely missing out on that aspect. But if you do want to modernize, I think you have to take away the cape. If that that's the whole purpose of it. As long as she's not looking like White Canary from the Arrowverse, we're good. I was about to say, is super. It doesn't even look like Supergirl as a cape right now, does she? Because I was going to say maybe they were doing that just to differentiate her from Supergirl. No, I didn't think she had a cape right now. Yeah, no. Yeah, except for Clark, a lot of them, and maybe yeah, I don't think, I think John. Yeah, most of them, I don't think are wearing capes. Well, then she should definitely have a cape. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like if Clark's the only one with a cape, she needs a cape. <laughs> They're on that same level. I'm sorry. Exactly. But no, um, I'm. I mean, I don't know why they had to have a fire and ice backup. I, I still am kind of confused about again that. to about, promote that mini series. I know, but like, I don't really see the. I mean, other than you know what I mean. Like, I just don't get why she got burdened with that. I think it was just eyes on. You it's know, because she's not even like. Leah Leah Williams is, is not even writing that series, so it just kind of felt tacked on, and a little bit to the detriment of Power Girl. Like she could have used those extra ten pages. I I think personally. Oh yeah, I would have enjoyed that too. But I wonder if it was it just the case of it's it like, was the editorial mandate. Yeah, and if you if you like Power Girl, maybe like I Fire guess because Fire and Ice was also during that Lazarus Planet stuff too within Action Comics. Is that yeah, what and there was a point where they were all like in Justice League around that time. You know, a certain. Aaron Justice stuff. League or Justice Society? Well, I mean, back in like the eighties, nineties, they you know they yeah. all three were in the Justice League at one point. And... Okay, if that's the tangential thread we're going on, that's fine. Oh, and <laughs> and again, female characters maybe you like this this one of the this female but female character book written by a female maybe you like this other one. Uh, maybe, maybe. But I think well, it also the, I think this week also benefited for Power Girl because it was the fifth Tuesday of the month and it was only like four other books out, right? Yeah, there wasn't a there wasn't a lot out, so yeah. So I think this actually we'll probably see really good sales on this. And I'll, remind me next week, and I'll, yes. I'll let you know. Also, it also came out during um when they put out DC Pride twenty three twenty twenty three. I you know the books that it came with like you know. Like, it stood out, for sure, yeah. against all the covers. Yeah, you had Detective Comics uh, 1072, Icon versus Hardware number three, and DC Pride 2023. So, yeah, this one, the, the covers alone were just, like, showstoppers and stood out on the shelves, so. Yeah, and I'd rather have this than, like, another, like, uh, you know, remember, yeah, like, the fifth, the fifth week they were doing, like, eight, just, like, annuals. I'd rather have this than, like, a Batman or a Harley annual, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I miss the tradition, but the tradition is like trash now. So, like everything mm -hmm. else in life, it's all trash. I mean, it's basically Let's do something the, different. <laughs> it's basically like the size of an annual, but it's just Power Girl. Well, in, it's in a, a back. Short. <laughs> well, yeah, in a back. Well, I wonder. I could have used. A, I could have literally used a giant size ninety six page Power Girl special, but that's just me. I was doing my wrist curls and everything, guys. Oh my. <laughs> Uh, gotta, gotta slip in a little a little innuendo here and there. Come on. I wonder if my wrist is ready for that. I mean, if if a character if they don't think a character like Power Girl can sustain like a monthly book, what about like doing something once a quarter like that, minus six pages once a quarter or something? Yeah, I, I think I think we I think that the the industry needs to try something new because it's yeah. dying. The comic book industry is dying. Like Spider Man's not selling how it used to be. Batman's not selling how it used to be. Um, look at the, you know, we talk about it all the time. Suit the the state of Superman. Um, mm -hmm. The indies are actually doing better than them at this point on a more consistent basis. Like Spawn and all his, you know, his whole family's like on a consistent yeah. basis doing better than the big two. So I mean, obviously there's something wrong. <laughs> you have to rethink the model because I think they think whether it's an ongoing or in a mini series, they have to have something at least once a month. It's like no, put something out once a quarter. I mean. I mean, we used to actually do that with the uh, artist showcase specials and stuff yeah. like that. Um, they used to do Vertigo those. Not... Used to, that used to be Vertigo's go-to model, to be quite honest, um, with a lot of their stuff, too. What was that, um, early 90s? They used to do, like, a Justice League quarterly, a Green Lantern quarterly. I mean. Yeah. 
because honestly with so many like mini i get burnt out on like the mini series and stuff so yeah but again but yeah put this out like once a quarter do power girls like the star and then if you want to follow else. this model do a second story with like another female character this time it was fire and ice maybe but huntress maybe that's, that, that was, was maybe about zantana to... yes <laughs> Yes. Maybe a crossover with Wonder Woman? I don't know. Yeah. Catwoman, whoever. It's so many female characters that have gotten the shaft in like the last decade. Well, not Catwoman, because she's consistently had it. I mean, she has her own books, so, but I'm but maybe throwing people here who don't have their own ongoing books. Well, we, we have Harley to thank for that. Harley has literally become the new Wonder Woman for whatever fucking reason. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I mean, hey, Power Girl with a Star Girl backup one time. <gasps> that would be cool. Or team up, Boone. I mean, we have a whole bunch of female Green Lanterns, a lot of stuff we can mm-hmm. do. If you want to do right. like the Power Girl Girl Power special. <laughs> I like I said, once a quarter do it. Yeah. It's so much they could be doing right now that they're just not. And but I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. But um the horseman kind of like, oh god, I don't know. It's yeah, that whole was... thing. I was like, who wrote this? A flash writer? Who came up with this? The Piper, <laughs> the pit, the pendulum. <laughs> I was like, Harley. I was like, Hartley, is that you, buddy? <laughs> that would have been cool, actually, if it was the Pied Piper, though. Yeah, but I think it was it's opportunity. A, it was more like she's finding like ideas or. Yeah, I I I know. <laughs> Psychic abilities always go wonky. <laughs> so, there's no shadow king, is what you say. Eh? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but no, solid, solid start. Uh, I saw more praise than hate, which is really good. I was really worried um, that this is going to be like the Marvels, where it's like, oh, it's female. Blah. We hate it. We're not even going to read it. We just hate it. Well, that's what I was going to say. A female-led book like this, yeah, you have to read it for yourself. Don't don't read the reviews. Yeah, like I said, and for the most part, but like it was a really uh, eyebrow raising review that I read from one of the mainstreams, and I was like, this is like the first time I was like, what's the difference? Oh, it's got more boobs, literally all over from the names to the characters. I what, did they, not know you were like this. I'm not gonna say the institution, but no, I was gonna say they didn't like it. Yeah, they hated it. They like gave wow. it the lowest rating. They gave it like a three or something wow so yeah he has frank miller brain rot i said it i said it frank miller oh frank miller okay your mother's a whore so i I was shocked so i was like yeah that's that's just pure misogyny like i said does it have its issues sure but am i willing to give it a chance yes i think it's a solid b plus yeah yeah, definitely. Just because it's spinning out of that Lazarus planet and the backup was really yeah. unnecessary for me personally. <laughs> and like you said, I could have used a couple more pages. Yeah. I mean, I, I would rather a story leave me wanting more than being like, ugh, at the end. Like, I don't ever want to read that again. You know, who, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like the Fire and Ice story. That's how it left me with only 10 pages. I'm like, oh. I shouldn't have had Guy Gardner in there. That really, really broke up the movie. I guess they used to date or whatever, and I get it. I yeah. get it. I mean, and, uh, and again, it's like we know Fire and Ice are getting a mini series. Come on, what's what's coming next for Power Girl? Come on. Exactly. Well, right. no, we know that she's gonna get a mini series. I thought that that was what it was said. It's not gonna be an ongoing. Oh, I didn't know. Doing... Did they even announce that? Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, they they announced it way back. I think. I, okay. I feel like I might have saw that in the solicits. I might. Is that gonna be Leah Williams? Pretty sure. Yeah. Or maybe I'm thinking of something else. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that they did say she was gonna. They, there was two spinoffs coming out of this book, and I'm I'm assuming since Fire and Ice is one. Oh wait, oh wait, here we go. Uh, Power Girl Special Number One launches two new Dawn yeah, okay. of the titles. I thought yeah, I read that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I smoked, so I don't know. My memory's not the greatest. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> smoked the doobie. Oh no, yes, because yes. Pot is spinning out Power Girl, of course, and Fire and Ice. Welcome to Smallville. So, yeah. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> I I, mean, you would think they wouldn't want to touch Smallville. Like, it's. They remember what happened the last time DC touched Smallville. They were like, oh, Tom Welling gave up his powers. What? That pissed so many people off. 
Are they trying to do like a like a parody of that Paris Hilton show? I'm just like, why are they? Why would Clark dump this on his mother? You know, it's just. Well, listen, he dumped Kira off with strangers, so you know, like, well, not strangers, but strangers. You know what I mean? Instead of taking care of her himself, yeah. so Clark has a habit. That's all I'm saying. He's not. He's not perfect. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Oh, okay. September fifth is when that Power Girl comes out. Nice. Because we're waiting till after Night Tears. But like, also, Dark Knight of the Soul was an interesting title for this issue. I know. I was like, I saw I'm that. Like, that. Um, are they trying to? Are they trying to bait and switch people? Maybe that's why that one reviewer was pissed off. Batman, my favorite character. They just assumed Dark Dark Knight. Dark Knight, like that. Yeah, they just assumed. I, I feel like maybe they just didn't get it <laughs> oh my okay so power girl and fire nice both come out september 5th so cool remind me to pick up fire nice because otherwise i won't <laughs> uh oh the i wonder is this going to be the or is that going to be the ongoing creative team because uh there's a cover by uh terry and rachel dodson oh Oh, we haven't heard from them in literal decades, right? At least like, um, since I... maybe, yeah. I feel like I haven't heard that name for DC in a really long time. Oh no, 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 no. Artist Bustos. Uh, I don't, know. I don't know. I think Leah is still going to be doing the Power Girl. Mini yeah, yeah. It did say, it did say, yeah, she's going to be writing the Power Girl. So, yeah. Hmm. Stand alone. Oh wait, uh, is that a, is that their new thing for miniseries? It says her standalone series. So yeah. Okay. Oh, you think it's gonna be? I think it's gonna be a miniseries. I don't think it's gonna be ongoing. Uh, again, if you're not Batman or Superman, or, yeah, I, hell, that Green Arrow right now is a miniseries. Yeah. Case in point. Well, it should be. It, it wasn't ready for prime time, but <clears throat> it's not my business right now. <laughs> I've kind of given up on the Green Arrow thing at this point. Uh, a treehouse arrow. I'm I'm done. I'm absolutely fucking done. <laughs> you don't know how bad that. I was just like, oh god, they're gonna make him like before Denny fixed him. Oh, it's just gonna be green Batman. And, and spoilers: the character they brought back from the dead, he's hanging out with at the moment. Yeah. I'm like, oh, really? We're going there? It was literally no need for that. <laughs> Let that bitch lay where she lays, bro. Whoa! Whoa! I freaking hate that character. I'm just like, I'm just like, isn't that the whole point? Well, I hope like, that he's just hallucinating. Honestly. Well, they aged her up a little bit too, because I'm just like, isn't that the whole point? Is like, you know, the, these kids, they either age them up or like kill them off, you know? Yeah. I digress. But yeah, so uh, Terry and Rachel, like, they do all the vamp Vampirella stuff. That's why I was just like, oh, it'd be interesting if they came back to DC. I haven't, like I said, I think since the 2010s, maybe? I think since that, um, they did something with Frank Miller. Oh, okay. I, I want to say it's the last thing I saw them do something for DC, but again, I'm old. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, no, I thought that this was great, though. I, I, I'm i glad we did a special for her. I hope everybody enjoyed the book. Honestly, I would I would love to see more Power Girl. I, I think it's overdue. Oh, yeah. We're back to her, like, classical roots, I guess, as it were. I can't wait for that September 5th. And again, if we, I guess we want an ongoing, man. You guys got to vote with your dollars. Yeah. That that's the main thing. If you really like a book, like I I, I know our me mates, but like I actually do go out and buy the variants and stuff too. So it's I don't. That's why I never really feel that. I I've given them literal millions of dollars probably at this point over the course of my life. Oh so yeah. Like I I literally don't feel bad, but I do support the stuff that I like uh, by buying physical copies and variants and stuff. And I don't even want to. I can't even tell you. I'm embarrassed to tell you how much money I actually spent on comic book free comic book day. So. Oh my! Well, no, like I went and bought art from a lot of the the uh, artists that were out and about and stuff like that. So. Yeah. I mean, I got my stuff feel, signed and don't yeah, don't so. feel. I mean, don't feel bad about that supporting the artists. Nah, no. Yeah. 
it's just so yeah it's like i just don't that's why i'm just like you know fuck corporations but i do like spend my money and i have spent way too much money at this point because <laughs> i'm an adult with adult money and no responsibilities now give me my comic books <laughs> So yeah, I'm I am definitely gonna vote with my dollars. Um, I'm interested to see what that story is, and like I said, I am super excited to see them explore the Power Girl dynamics. With, I hope they I hope she gets a chance to talk to everybody in the Superman family, and I hope she gets to talk to like Lois too. I feel like we haven't seen that dynamic. Yes, that would be. Oh yes, that's the team up. We, oh, that would see you do you do that series we we're talking about. I mean, that's an issue. Power Girl with a Lois Lane back backup. Now that's something I can now that. Can get a backup. <laughs> exactly. Because I, honestly, I like that last uh, Lois Lane series they did. I don't know why. They, I mean, and it got good reviews and, and it it was doing well, but I don't know what happened. You would think they would even do the good. Jimmy Olsen book, low key, like did good, but they got rid of it. Yeah, and you would think they would do something now, like another mini series, because you have a TV show, Superman and Lois. <laughs> well, I think they 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 learned their lesson from that Supergirl thing they tried to pull. <laughs> Remember, it was so bad. It was so bad. <laughs> well, that whole thing, too. It's like in the comics, they couldn't decide whether they wanted to be the TV show or not because the comics were AKA kind of the different. Green Arrow effect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, babes, we actually don't like Felicity, and that proved it, but you guys kept her on anyway. <laughs> that literally proved real Green Arrow fans hate that version of Felicity Smoke. <laughs> I was not the only one. Ugh. <sighs> I feel vindicated, and <laughs> that, that made me feel so good and warm inside, bro. I was just like, see, it's not just me being a bitch. It's true. <laughs> no real Green Arrow fan likes this. <laughs> we we tolerated Diggle. Diggle was incorporated way better. Oh, my. Exactly. But Felicity smoking the Arrowverse is a menace and should have been stopped. When she blew up that city, she should have been stopped. <laughs> She should have went to Blackwater, <laughs> Blackgate Iron. Penitentiary, <laughs> Iron Heights. Exactly. Uh. Anyway, um, yeah. Uh, please do send in your thoughts, uh, even if it's just about the art. But hopefully, you made it to the story. Uh, <laughs> yes, you made it to the dialogue boxes. Oh, I, I hey, it's it's like hey, there's two reasons I like this Power Girl. <laughs> The story in the art, ha <laughs> <laughs> uh, So, but yeah, and again, I, I have all summer. I've been trying even before this issue, but I want to try to get, I, I want to talk to Leah Williams. If you know how Let's to make, manifest it, guys. If you know how to make that happen, please get a hold of Put me. Put the vibes in the air. Exactly. Okay, it's not the same week. No, I was looking up, because uh, I know Flash and uh, Wonder Woman 800 are both coming up, I think, Said Flash is next week, and then Wonder Woman 800 June twentieth or something. You want to pop in or check in on that, or I, I mean, you, if you have time, I don't care. Do you want to? <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Which one or both? Because I was gonna say there are two different weeks. Yeah, no, we can do both. I mean, okay. I, th I think that's a, a really monumental thing that happened for them, especially. Given the history where they they they've been treated kind of like the literal red set redheaded stepchildren of DC for whatever freaking reason. Well, pretty like, much. How come like Flash's book should have been contained? Like Flash is kind of like Spider Man at this point. Like, what volume are you talking? <laughs> it's like, <ugh. laughs> so many volumes. I know, I know. And it... <sighs> you don't even you don't even include impulse in that, so. <laughs> You don't actually, because it's a different thing. But. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, kids. So, t two more episodes in June. Yes, at least. Yes. Uh, so, the Flash eight hundred is next week, I believe. And yeah, and Wonder Woman eight hundred. It said June twentieth. So, and I mean, it's it's I'm mean, it's curious to see what they're gonna do with that Flash thing, because I mean, this is a big number for them. Oh, the Flash thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, it's the end of Jeremy Adams' run. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah, he said he would have stayed on there a lot longer, but. Got to make a shiny new number one. Can't You can't be like Marvel and just reboot with the same person. <laughs> Even DC wouldn't do that. Oh, burn. 
Yeah, Marvel's Marvel's making some bad choices. That's all I'm saying. I'm worried <laughs> about Marvel. Uh, yeah. It's not just the Z thing. I mean, like on a on a real high level business scale of things, they are in Disney in general too. But like Marvel specifically, it, it it's starting to feel like the end of the '90s again. Like they've been shuffling and doing stuff and backstabbing people. So well, that's what Will and I were talking about last night. It's I that's the, I posed the question. It's like. You know, back in the day, they were willing to take chances with these comics. Now, when they're now that they're back, rinse, repeat. Now that they're backed by big companies, are they just like they're not one? They're not willing to take chances, and two, they're just like, oh, okay, so we lost money on that, but you know, generates ideas for movies. Well, hell yeah, I guess the merch, the merchandise must be doing good to hold it afloat. Cause yeah, <laughs> those comic book sales are pathetic, and you know we're currently in a recession, so. Um, mm -hmm. you know the numbers are down even more so than they were same time last year and again it's like do people like or i don't think people are reading as much are they just in general yeah but Book, regular books magazines even just going to blogs to read articles and stuff like that's just not a thing anymore thank you tiktok and again again you have so many thank support. you buzzfeed and your stupid listicles and there's so much uh more entertainment these days that you know, competing for your money, you know. Bro, I, I don't watch TV anymore. Streaming so. ser <laughs> yeah, it's streaming services. Uh, yeah, I don't watch basic video, cable video, at all. Video games. Uh, exactly. There's a lot of competition here. So. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but Power Girl, Power Girl cut through the, the noise for me. So yes, I know. I mean, we play, I mean, I think... I think last episode when I said, hey, let's cover Power Girl, you're like, yeah, okay, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> kind of have to. <laughs> it's kind of our brand of busty justice. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Make sure you use that in the title. <laughs> busty justice, a.k.a. Power Girl special number one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Damn. Really? Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like just like when you're on Twitter, just be like Busty Justice. Check out extra Busty. extra special edition Busty Justice. Check out Busty Justice. Okay. All right. How I'll do Power Girl every week. Hail! I'll do Power Girl every week if you want. You and me both, brother. You and me both. <laughs> I was gonna say we should cover that that, that series I was talking about, the one that New Fifty Two killed. Ooh, you know what? Yeah, I wouldn't mind it if we if we could find some time. And maybe after we do Heroes Reborn, after that brain rot, and I get back in September, we could do that for Patreon. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Ask the boys if that's something they're interested in. If they are, we can do that. Hmm. Hmm. A character with. We'll, huge... we'll we'll put visuals up on the Patreon as well. So. A character with huge breasts. Hmm. I wonder if Ray would be down for that. Hmm. <laughs> Have you not been paying attention for the last year? Sounds like a plan, Jan. Just to make sure. I mean, they do pay for it. Hey, oh. Hey, oh. <laughs> uh, See, if you want to tell us what to do, become a patron. That's right, kids. Yes. Also, if you want to be made fun of. <laughs> if you want to be bullied and bully, <laughs> become a part of the Patreon elite. <laughs> the hard master. That's what right. drops specifically crafted and tailored for you? Join the Patreon. <laughs> Go ahead, throw it in. That's right. So, oh, and uh, yes, and when Lilf is on her uh, vacation, my sabbatical, September, <laughs> uh, <laughs> to the asylum. Uh, yes, so uh, I know Will and I were still trying to figure out what we're gonna do, but uh, yeah, instead of salty and petty in September, yes, we're gonna be getting more un unlimited justice. So, first, we were talking about maybe doing all the star. You know all the different star men but then we're like maybe we should do some legacy stuff like you know the legacy of star man we'll see what we're talking about uh yeah there's a few where just like i trust you boys you'll do something interesting hey he's another real professor come on exactly He'll go he taught a class on comics <laughs> suck it charlie <laughs> it's dc he won't listen exactly <laughs> This is a sidekick to me. I don't even know if he knows that exists. <laughs> what is that? Uh, he knows it exists. I just don't think he knows what's on it. I don't think he remembers. 
<laughs> Unless Tristan brings it up, I don't think he'll remember. <laughs> that loose cannon, Charlie Usser. I'm on cancel. <laughs> Uh, all right. Anything else, Little Hellfire? Nope. Let's uh, let's wrap it up and fly away. Hail, hail. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, kids. Next week, I guess. Yes, I believe I believe it said next week. Uh, Flash eight hundred. So uh, yes, come back for our review of that, and then what is that like two weeks or so after that? Yeah, whatever June twentieth is that week. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll cover the Wonder Woman eight hundred. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there'll be two weeks after that. Yes. Wonder Woman 800. So, yes, we'll do both reviews of those. Uh, email us your thoughts because we'll probably do it that Wednesday because I get my comics on Wednesday. So, we'll have at least 24 hours to email us your thoughts on the issues. Capes and Lunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 Capes. And hey, send us your thoughts on the Power Girl special number one. We'll read them next time to start off the episode all right and remember you can find all things capes and lunatics if you're new here uh episode social media merchandise uh and the aforementioned patreon please uh please subscribe uh we need more we need women because it's all men over there right now so come on yeah, girl. We, we can use some clams and yams you know what i'm saying Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't, we won't treat you like Frank Miller, we promise. And again, you can suggest uh, stuff we cover. Right now, uh, well, we just started a uh, review of all the series from Heroes Reborn, so we'll go off late the first month. But <laughs> Go check out that episode. I think it was a really great discussion. Oh, yeah. I heard the greatest comic discussion of all time. Who did it? <laughs> we did it. <laughs> I think Charlie is a bad influence on me. <laughs> well. All right. Little Hellfire. All right, Grandma. Where can anyone find you in any place besides Facebook? No, of course not. I'm old and I'm settled in. Friend your, friend your internet granny, Little Hellfire, on Facebook. Either do the six or do the nine. <laughs> That's a mouthful. It's so salty. Spread it. <laughs> Not really going with the friendly grandma image here, Phil. <laughs> Holds me down. Uh, well, give me a drop that's wholesome from you, and I'll play it. <laughs> you never, you never take my wholesome drops ever. <laughs> when do you say anything wholesome? Oh, you don't want to know the things I've done. I'm sure I have at least I've said at least two wholesome things in like five years, though. I'm pretty sure. I think if I want a wholesome drop, I got to go to Eve Heavenwater for that. She's not going to make a comeback, so. <gasps> really? Oh, that's right. She settled down and having a bunch more kids. That's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She's got no time for podcasts. Just time for her children, her husband, and the church. That's right. <laughs> and her knitting. All right. Ah, uh, nice. And her cats. All right. Thank you for joining us again next week. Yes. See, we plan it. You heard the planning right here live on the air. Next week, Flash 800. Oh, I should see if I can, if Jeremy Adams would join us again. Yes. Because Will and I talked to him for the Green Lantern stuff. Yes. Cool. Let's see. Fingers crossed. I, I'll reach out. I'll reach out. I'm sure he would do it just probably just to schedule, you know. Yeah, yeah. everybody's out. super busy because. Because <laughs> they're doing 50 books. All right, kids, come back next time and get yourself some justice. Unlimited justice. Outrageous. <laughs> <laughs>